You can hear me all right, correct? Very well. All right, everybody. So I'm so excited today to introduce you to actually one of my very first fitness coaches. And Ori Hoffmecker is an author. He's a fitness expert, researcher, and an expert on how to use food to build muscle, to improve health. And now in his new book, he talks about how we can extend our life under stress. I can't wait to talk to him about that. But um, he's also known for his book, The Warrior Diet, The Anti-Estrogenic Diet, which I read both of them. They're amazing books. So we're going to talk about that today. We have so much to talk about. He founded his company, Defense Nutrition, in 2007, and which provides cutting-edge information on human nutrition and offer, also offers healthy nutritional products that are all GMO-free, which is music to my ears. And so with that said, I just want to introduce you to Ori. Thank you, Ori, for joining me today. I can't even tell you how excited I am to be able to talk with you. You know that you are, we've known each other for 11 years. It's a long, it's a long time, but it's also a short time, you know? Yeah. Just, you know Kitty. <laughs> right. And I even have, you're going to laugh at this, but I still have my warrior diet, nutrition and CFT certification in a frame. Nice, nice. Hanging on my wall. I remember that. I remember that. No, and I think I told you, I think the best sign is to see you again. And it's like I saw you. We haven't seen each other for a long time. You haven't changed at all. In really? April, great. So for what did you tell me? This is a great sign. Yeah. April 2nd, 2007 was when I flew out to your facility and you taught me CFT training, which by the way, my clients have a love-hate relationship with, by the way. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm so excited. So I, I want to talk, I kind of want to go in two kind of directions today because you're, you're such a wealth of information, but I want to make sure that I really hit kind of the two topics that are really close to my heart and also you're the guru on. One is, of course, let's talk about kind of the fitness um, industry and fat loss uh, because, you know, you excel at that and, and talk about your new book. And then I want to also talk a little bit about about your research and how it relates to disease, specifically cancer. As you know, I, I did have cancer, and we can get into that a little bit later. But I really want to hear your thoughts and your expertise on the area of disease, which I know you're a guru at. So can we go those two directions today? You tell me how, how do you want to start. Let yes. Start. So I first want to know, uh, we're going to talk about your book, your new book, but I want to talk mm -hmm. about, I want to understand you are known as a Renaissance man. And for my, my readers who don't know what that is, tell me what a Renaissance man is. Um, what they mean that I specialize in many, many areas mm -hmm. where I can express myself and create through. Um, I did, and indeed, uh, you know, beside uh, my military and physical career, I made my living as a political artist for virtually 30 years. It's a long time. Yeah, it's a long time. But I was always interested in human sciences. That's what I have a degree in, and especially human survival. Mm -hmm. Survival in general, the science of survival, is the most important science. We need to understand what makes us live life and stay alive and even thrive on this planet. Mm -hmm. What make us be able to resist this, these forces of entropy, you know? Yeah. Universal forces of entropy, Newton yeah. forces, they destroy everything that you know. They decay um, houses. They turn vehicle into scrap. They turn rock into dust. Yeah. It's a very powerful entropy forces. What make us resist them? Yeah. Well, you were the first person, honestly, I think in, in, in probably the country that introduced intermittent fasting. And I, I learned that from you. I learned back 10, 12 years ago, the, the benefits of intermittent fasting. And that, that had a, a term I had never heard before. And you had taught me that. So why don't you talk a little bit about, and I know you talk about this in your Warrior Diet book, but talk a little bit about the benefits and why it's so important and why it's so you know, critical to our human health. 
Thank you. I was the first one to introduce the concept of intermittent fasting in practice in my warrior diet, because at that point I already knew, based on initial scientific evidence and a trend, that all organisms thrive under stress. In fact, stress is inherent to life. There is no meaning to life without stress, right. most specifically resistant to stress. Right. So, because we biologically evolve to strive, adapt, and improve under stress, we need to know that in today's world, we need to stress ourselves deliberately and methodically in order to strive, in order to be healthy, in order to look good, and in order to resist aging. This is a critical rule. Intermittent fasting is the basic feeding cycle that grants you at least 12, maybe some people less, eight up to 18 hours of nutritional stress per day. This is doing miracles to your body. When I introduce it, I introduce it on a very simple concept that only now, Science has already recognized the benefit of this cycle. Yeah, 12 years later, and you've been doing it for 12 years. <laughs> yes, it's eating one main meal per day, not one meal every other day, not eating and then fasting for two days or every day, under eating during the day, being on a negative energy, under nutritional stress during the walking hours of the day, yeah. And compensating every night with a nice supper. And it doesn't matter when you eat your supper. It could be 6 o'clock, yeah. it could be 8 o'clock, or even 12 o'clock at night. So explain why the, physi the physiology or the physics behind why it's healthy to do that. Because you know we're going to get a lot of people that say that's ridiculous or that's, how can that be healthy? And, and also, to be honest with you, back in the day when I used to train bodybuilders to do shows, it was the opposite. They ate every two to three hours. And you can't actually deny the, the results that they were getting. They would get ripped by eating every two to three hours. But I think what you're saying is that long-term health – right? is probably not, not going to be. I, I believe that in the fitness today, and I want to answer your question. Yeah. In the fitness today, there is no clear criteria what are the goal. If the goal is to build muscle, then bodybuilding maybe is the way. Yeah. If the goal is to be healthy, extend life, and resist aging, then bodybuilding is the worst recipe to do that. And I'll explain it in a minute. Yeah. But what science already recognizes also out the data, the existing data, scientists already know that nutritional stress, that means lack of food, calorie restriction, or complete fasting is the number one trigger of your longevity genes. And as they trigger your longevity genes, especially, you know, the CO2AIN, the AMPK pathway, and some other pathway that relate to that, what happened in your body, your body totally shifts into a survival mode when genes that make you inflame and age are being inhibited. Genes that make you live longer, anti-inflammatory genes, genes that convert your fat cells from fat storing, large fat storing, to fat burning, small fat burning, converting PPAR gamma to PPAR alpha. All this process start to take place. Your body becomes extremely efficient in utilizing energy. Your muscle and brain and tissue, there's a process. It's a genetic, it's a transcription code that increases mitochondria density in your muscle. That means mitochondria is an energy furnace, organelle of the cell. That means pound for pound, Terry, you can be a very lean person, but produce twice as much as energy as the big bodybuilder buff, whose muscle fiber is more primitive and inferior to the muscle that you can develop even if it's half the size. Yeah. So, yes, intermittent fasting is a protocol or a regimen that methodically force your body to be under nutritional stress for eight up to 18 hours per day. All this amazing life extending compound that you produce in response to distress from the heat shock protein response to certain kind of vitamin and 
anti-inflammatory hormone-like or hormones mm -hmm. start to percolate and change you, transform your own body. On the top of that, what I find recently, and that's one of the reasons I wrote this book, that our food chain, the human food chain, was programmed with nutrients that mimic fasting and exercise on your body. In fact, our primal food chain was loaded with nutrients that we don't even know that they exist. Imagine all the dieters in the world that you go and you fast or you restrict your calorie and then you exercise, but you constantly have a tendency to gain the fat again. So it's an ongoing struggle. Yeah. Well, imagine that your dieting impact will be 10 times higher if you consume nutrients that mimic the effect of dieting and exercise on your body, even when you sleep. Like, like can you give me some examples of what kind of nutrition or nutrients do that? Well, yes, I have a, a whole research project that drive me to write the book. It's called Stress Activated Food. Initially, my research was about the impact of stressed food. Again, I do believe in this, uh, that stress is inherent to life. And while we already know, Terry, you know that if you exercise and you fast a diet, you do something good for yourself because people know that if exercise, you basically live longer, you are leaner, you are healthier. Yeah. But what about the food that we eat? Right. Most of the food that we eat, the tree of food, is coming from overfed sources, obese sources, and unstressed sources. Is there a difference between stress food and not? And I was working with um, some scientists, some of them are major researchers in the area of molecular aging. And what I found was stunning that this nutrient not only mimic the effect of exercise, they do even a better job. They directly activate the gene, longevity gene that I just talked about. They yeah. shift your body to be in a fat burning mode, but that's just on a vanity surface. Deep inside, most of the toxic, uh, nutrients have a major scientific record of being toxic to tumors and cancer cells. They're extremely anti-inflammatory. They really put your body in a mode of not only resistant aging, be biologically fit. Look, Terry, yeah. most people don't know what is biological fitness. It's not the typical fitness, 24 hours of bodybuilding that you go and see people pumping some iron and look the same every day. Right. Biological fitness is about your ability to survive and resist stress and aging. Yeah. And disease. Yeah. This is the definition. It is different yeah. than the typical fitness. So when you combine intermittent fasting, when you combine a viable diet and bring back this missing nutrient back to our diet, your chance now, I literally mean it. If you do it right and at the right time at the right, you can double your lifespan, I believe, may perhaps even more. It's already been shown in other animals. It can happen. Yeah. However, we need to know what they are and we need to know what to do. Look, Terry, when you learn about nutrition, even if you try to get your degree or PhD, right? With you, they, they don't learn anything about this. It's they get, simply... They get, medical doctors get one day, I learned this yeah. basically by working with physicians and also when I went through my thing, doc, physicians get one half day, sometimes one day, of, of nutrition class and eight years of med school, one day. It's, it, it, it's ridiculous. Uh, it match my experience with doctors and they know that. The issue is the system doesn't know, the FDA and the RDA does not right. even recognize the nutrition, which by the way are more important for our survival. Right. Today than anything else, look at the rate of obesity and diabetes and metabolic stream growth that yeah. in fact our society, we need to understand it. So. What happened today, we live in a world that is overly industrially um, yeah. converted, let's put it like this. Our food chain is so far away from the, what we biologically involved to benefit. Overprocessed, GMOs, toxic. And very glycemic. I mean, yeah. look at the, if you look at the typical groceries of the average Joe, okay, and you can see that sugar is always there yeah. and 
yeah. when we find flour for baking, all holiday happy days are all served by beef, with, with food that shorten your life. Right. We people, we the people, fought, fought very hard for the freedom from want. And yeah. while we fought for the freedom from want, we free ourselves from hunger and hardship. But this freedom is what set us now victim. We became victim. I, I think I think people once they learn this stuff, if they if they truly do care about their 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 health, they will take the time to read your books and to research this stuff. But most people, honestly, Ori, they don't. They want they want the they want to eat bad. They want the gluttony, and they don't care about long term health until you've been affected with a disease. And usually by that time, it's very too it's a lot of times too late. I think people they get a wake up call by when they actually develop a disease when they should be doing this stuff before they develop that disease. Right? You're absolutely right, but here's the interesting yeah. part, and I have experience with hundreds of people directly, probably millions of people indirectly. I can tell you that sugar or sugar and fat combined work exactly like crack cocaine. They bind to the same receptors, they make you addictive, and there probably was a biological reason why we needed to enjoy the taste of sweet. Mm -hmm. But we were never introduced to this process Food. Maltodextrin did not exist. This is even sweeter than sugar. So right. we are now prone to food that work on us like drug. But like with drug, there are way to rehabilitate people. Right. So for anyone who cannot give up on his sugar, I can tell you this. It takes about six weeks of shifting to the right diet to reset your brain. It's part, I show it in my book. Reset your brain to enjoy your food even more than you enjoy now. When I eat my supper, I, I never count calories. I eat as much as I want yep. to my heart. And yep. I never, never have a tendency to gain excess weight or to bout right. with my pleasure. Basically, right. it's all going in one route. You adapt to the pleasure of being under stress, and you adapt to the pleasure of compensation. Both are important. Stress also, we need to know, stress can kill you and stress can heal you. It can never and should never be overextended. Yeah. For all of you who train in the gym for two hours every day, you are really damaging yourself. For all the long I know. Distance. Yes. I was guilty of it back when I was doing competitions. And I, and I learned from you, too, that I came, when I came to you, Lori, I had adrenal fatigue. Remember? Yes, I remember that. And you taught me a, you know, the, the different way of training and, and to switch up my diet. And I'm going to tell you something. Since I've been doing the intermittent fasting, I have not. I have felt better than I ever have. And, and, that, and that's, that doesn't mean starving. I think a lot of people, when like my clients come to me and I introduce them to intermittent fast, and they think, oh, is that the, well, you don't eat for four or five days, you take all these supplements? No, it's not that kind of fasting. And they also ask me, and maybe you can address this too, the difference between a ketogenic diet and intermittent fasting. And I'm like, they're totally complete different things. I'm cool. not, I don't know about you, maybe you can talk on it, but I am not uh, a fan of ketogenic. I'm ready to talk about ketogenic effect. There's a lot of sense in the ketogenic diet yeah. because the ketone fuel, I prefer survival fuel. And in all biological system of animals, uh, the shift from carbohydrate to fat fuel is a good thing. Yes. Usually when the body shift from carb to fat in your own system, it right. means that your body become more efficient. It's get to a survival mode. The production of ketone body itself have yeah. shown to nourish the brain in a better way than glucose alone. So the whole idea, and it also can help relieve some kind of disease, especially seizures. Um, but the diet itself was never meant to be a diet per se. Look, For a long period of time, right. Oh, Plus the type of foods that they're eating, the type of ketone. I mean, some of these ketone diets I've seen, Ori, the food that they're eating are extremely inflammatory. You know what? Absolutely right. And there is more than that. Right. Massive risk accumulated evidence indicate that when you push fat too long and too much to your body, you start to damage your mitochondria. You age very fast. Yes. So even though you resolve may, perhaps one problem, you create other problems. As right. far as obesity, the people that's supposed to need it most. If you are obese 
you are the last one on the list that can enjoy ketogenic diet. I tell you why, because your body breaks the fat. The fat release glycerol. Glycerol immediately convert back to sugar in your body. Hence, your ketogenic state is diminished. So what happened? You are prone to constantly jeopardize your own effort. You suffer a very strict diet. And you may even damage yourself because people who are obese in many times suffer from hyperlipidemia. They cannot utilize fat well. You really need to do it more smart, in a smartest way. Professor Kaghio, who came with a ketogenic diet, I believe 40 or 50 years ago, excuse me if I'm wrong, in a decade, but he was a genius guy who made, dedicated life to this research. He's one of the first ones to discover the benefit of the ketone bodies on the brain, but clearly the diet was targeting children who suffer from epilepsy mm -hmm. and clearly show also the downside of it. Since then, it turned to be, again, another industrial hype. So again, right. ketogenic diet is done, if done, is good, if done smart. Yeah. To the right people, it must be intermittent and it must incorporate intermittent fasting enough if you eat this high-fat diet in your main meal, fine. But give your body enough hours during the day to break the fat and clear the fatty acid from your system. Do not be in a ketogenic diet or multiply meal per day, not even swim meal per day. It's way too dangerous and way too prolonged. That's Thank you. Thank you for saying that because I've been saying that too. And, and sometimes people, you know, I, I, I get a lot of clients who come to me who have these issues of diabetes or they have obesity or whatever. And the first thing that they'll tell me is that I've tried the Atkins diet. I've tried the ketogenic diet. I'm like, you, you've got to do what your body needs, which is correct. good nutrition, first of all, and, and implement some intermittent fasting. So uh, thank you for saying that. That's and, it and has to make sense. It got to make sense. Yes. And beside weight loss, look, weight loss is an aspect. It's one aspect. Um, you can say that anti-aging is an aspect to I say no. Anti-aging is inherent. Look, we were trained to believe the following. We are born, and as we're born, we grow. That's true. Right. And then after that, we just age. And right. we, age, we age until we die. It seems true, but not completely. Now there's more and more evidence that we were born with inherent anti-aging mechanism in our body. I have a whole chapter of that again. I mentioned my book. I believe that aging is a disease, but it's not age-related disease. It's a stress-related disease. As long, Terry, as long as your body is trained to resist stress, it will resist inflammation, it will resist disease, and resist aging at the same time. So when, you it's say a when you say trained to resist it's stress, how do you train your body to, to utilize stress? We have a system. It's called the Adaptive Stress Response System, which is inherent to all organisms, from bacteria to human. In fact, there is evidence that segment of this system, factor of this system, like heat shock protein, was produced on the planet before life came about. That means... When God created this life, he's probably created the stress response system ahead of time just to make sure that life will continue, okay? What I'm saying is this. You have a very evolutionary conserved system designed to resist stress, resist disease, resist inflammation, and resist any stress or heat, cold, nutritional stress in particular, you know, even emotional stress. You have it. The problem is that most people today, because of the diet lifestyle, constantly inhibit the system. So they become extremely vulnerable to stress, disease, and aging. In my book, I show the protocol. Intermittent fasting, of course, is be part of it, but the others, a protocol. How to constantly keep your stress response system viable. Humming, ready to keep and serve you the way it should. And they, I show some scientific evidence, not just empirical, on organisms that are stressed versus organisms that are spoiled from plants to animal. And you can see that an animal that is stressed nutritionally can look 
half of her age or its age than the same species that is grown like us, overly protected, overly comfort, unstressed, chronically fed. Total different species. Now you need to choose where do you want to be. I say, whoever told you that life is easy is a liar. But life can be exciting. And I, I want to talk about, and if it's exciting, it can be enjoyable. You can really enjoy being yourself and excel in whatever you do. Physically and mentally and cognitive, you can be, perhaps, I believe so, even the IQ start to go up with this or down. So you need to decide what, where do you want to be. Yeah. As far as you said something very right, but people are so afraid yeah. to give up on stuff that they believe gives them enormous pressure pleasure yeah but i can tell you the following there are numerous channels of pleasure that we can get not just from food there is sex there is delayed pressure uh, of um, um you know acceptance and i would say you are rewarded for achievement that you do and social status and being alpha versus beta, male and female. These are all being a leader of a group or turning to be a leader of your group. It doesn't matter how big it's your group. It could be even your family or friends. There are multiple ways of reward that people can seek and get. They just need to know that they are much more than a creature that enjoy eating or shove in food. And this reward can be far, far more rewarding than just eating your chocolate, your typical chocolate or cookie. That said, I do believe in one thing, Terry, we need to offer the society, our society real solution, not just talk. Okay. I'm dedicated myself to massive research on creating our product. I'm not selling them. I'm just creating them that will conquer the bottom of the junk food chain. I'm, so I'm, talking, excited. About, I'm talking about plant-based first sugar substitute that will function like sugar. Look, but it is not sugar. It is healthy. Cookies that compete with any junk cookies but are made with no added sugar and no flour. Granolas, the same thing. Yeah. Perhaps sometimes I use oats. I have nothing against old grains. And and chocolate the, the way it should be because cocoa is the great stuff. Cocoa is amazing. It's one of the stuff that I was talking about. But once you add sugar, you negate all the benefits. Right. So we're doing now experiment, including scientific experiments, to create scientific junk food, I would say, that are well, healthy. When, when you get that done, you need to make sure you tell me where that's going to be so that I can tell all my fans where to... I'll let you know. Are let you know. selling it? You're going to be selling uh, it or no? We, we deliberately try not to sell it now. We are doing all the uh, organoleptic tests. We got great review. We even put some famous coaches or famous team, sport team on NDA, and they tested it with, and people really like it. Wow. Love it. Everybody want to stop. People know, I don't want to be guilty. I don't want to get fat. I don't want to have the cake and get fat. I believe that within a relatively short time, we will start to release stuff that will be a model, a proof of concept, that it's possible with enough creativity and science to conquer the junk food, show, uh, food chain that is now rendering our species, humanity, to be an endangered species. Cool. You, you can see on the rate yeah. of obesity, if you saw species like canine or feline in such a rate of obesity right. and metabolic you would say that this species is about to be endangered if it's not already. Right. Yeah. Why don't we see it in our own species? You know what, Terry, I think my, one of my last chapters, really, that, that really is heartbreaking, is baby food. You have children, I have children. There's a massive research that, that again, researchers already know that there's a need for infant formula because 
Many mothers today have no idea that they should not breastfeed their children, especially a mother with diabetes. Uh, there is a clear research also of mammal, mammalian species, that when the offspring get milk from diabetic mom, uh, the high insulin and sugar in the milk program the offspring for diabetes and obesity for the rest of his life. Makes sense. So this is really bad. Yeah. It's early on. So you see website that show how the uh, diabetic women, how to nurse the breastfeed, the infant. I, th I think I, it's absolutely wrong. Right. Well, the, the options aren't good either because the instant formulas that are being made right now are full of mercury and they're full of toxins and that's, that's not a good option either. So where do, what does a woman just say, do? You just say, but the worst of it, they also put maltodextrin inside and they don't need to declare the FDA allow them to put right. up to 30% yeah. maltodextrin, yeah. which has higher glycemic index than sugar in, yeah. in all infant formula. And there are only four facilities that produce infant formulas today. So they dictate how it's going to be. So what happened? You look at the label. You don't see added sugar for the infant. But right. there is macrodextrin that basically all infant formula today seem to mimic the very milk, breast milk, that children should not have used, let alone other effects. I mean, the composition is far away from mimicking. Right. Uh, human milk. Uh, beside, we talk about SAF, stress activated mutant, right? What they do. Well, I do believe that eating meat plays a serious danger. We'll talk about it in a second. But milk of stress animal, like grass fed animal, these are nutritional stress animal, yield very similar nutrient to plant. These are nutrients that extend the life of the newborn. We were supposed to get it from our breast milk, good bifidobacteria, probiotics, good nutrient that benefit the newborn, but it also benefit the adults. So what happened today in you know, <laughs> infant formula? They just claim organic because organic. They have money. Money. Yeah. Attractive label. Yeah. It may even taste good, but my God, I, I would know. never, I would never, you know what? I wouldn't even put it puppy dog or a kitten on that and you know <laughs> you know, check check the aisle go to a pet store check the aisle of kitten formula they are written by vet they are designed by vet better than human formula so well, hopefully you know it's all about education and if, if i had to learn this when i went through cancer right because i never had to learn about cancer before but we have to be our own, our own health advocates. And that's why, you know, people like you interviewing you and in your books and, and the books I've written, it's like people have got to take ownership of their health. Otherwise, they're going to continue to be um, convinced by mainstream media about the, the benefits of all of this crap that we're pretty. And that's why, that's why the, the rate of cancer is going up now. One, to th one out of every three women and one out of every two men, Ori, I'm sure you know this, are going to be diagnosed with cancer next year. And it's so frightening because it has to do more, not just, of course, chemicals is a big, big part of it, especially pesticides, but it has to do a lot with the diet. Yes. With the diet that is cancer promoting. Everything, every time the Terry, you probably know that. I'm, I'm sure you do. Inflammation equal cancer. Yep. Every time you find inflammation, there is a high probability of getting cancer. Um, massive research was done on a GI, um, um, intestinal cancer, stomach cancer, especially colon cancer. Every time there is inflammation in your is chronically continues, mm -hmm. it leads well, to high I think this is, I think this is a good segue. I think this is a good segue to get into the topic of this. I know your mother um, had an, had a cancer that was directly related to est uh, hormones, right? And that's yes. what prompted you to write the um, anti-estrogenic book. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, it became an emotional issue for me. Sure. Uh, Sorry. Somebody that you love, uh, um, to lose somebody that you love in front of you because of something that could be preventable is uh, extremely frustrating, but it also drove me to go deeper into the research and figure out real solution, especially for women, but not just women, 
it just break my heart that now in the 21st century we are all this science. And who am I to say, you know, I'm not a woman, but women are so desperate, they start to self-mutilate themselves because they're afraid they have the wrong genes. They're afraid that if their parents had uh, cancer, they're going to get it. Who am I to say, but based on the research that exists, everybody have good and bad genes. It's really up to you. How do you keep your bad genes dormant and activate the good genes to work for you? Mm -hmm. So rather than being fast to self-mutilate and cut vital organs out of your body and then take constant chemicals and drug to compensate for what you do, and I say it with all my heart and all my respect, um, I think people should start to accumulate some more knowledge about natural method to bowel cancer the way you did, Terry. And I'm, I'm, I'm really uh, adore you for what you did. It needs a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage because Please. everybody around you, especially the medical field, they will tell you you're stupid. Yes. And they will tell you that you're doing the wrong thing and you shouldn't play around with cancer. And you know what, Ori? And, and part of this is, honestly, part of this is because of what you taught me too, but I look at cancer like any other disease. I look at it like diabetes. I look at it like any other adrenal fatigue. Our bodies can heal itself if we know what to do. The problem, and you're doing, it, you're doing it right because yeah. it's already known yeah. that cancer sick cells or tumor can be formed in any body, including healthy. But as I said, our stress response system, especially the heat shock protein, when it's ready, it can detect them. It search and destroy them and actually recycle them. We have a system when completely fast, I show in my book, when you totally deplete glycogen, which is extreme. Yeah. That's why I recommend exercising while fasting. You activate, which is rare to most people, they hardly reach this level of energy deficit. And energy deficit is the key trigger of homeosis, the process in the Anyway, when you deplete your glycogen, this rare situation, you becoming extremely resilient to any stressor. It's the number one. Mm -hmm. Very dangerous situation. Your body now to compensate, activate major actions. One of them is called autophagocytosis, where the body start to cleanse within cells and destroy and recycle broken protein and derbies. It's almost like a renovation on old house into a new house. But those cells that are sick and cancer cells are being detected and destroyed by immune system and recycled out. This awesome system, it also done major other things. We talked of some of it before. But this awesome system supposed to work every day. Wild animals and humans were hungry. Hungry day by day. When they ate, they ate when they could prepare the food, usually it was by the end of the day, or whenever they could. But hunger was predominantly a predominant factor of life that encouraged evolution to design it the way we are. We today don't, are not hungry anymore. We today are not nutritional stress. We fail to activate the stress system that constantly destroy cancer in your body every day. It shouldn't be done just once a year. You get something and you right. do that. Already a crisis. And you were brave enough to cross it. Well, the, the, the thing with me too, Ori, is that um, I, I, I personally don't believe my cancer was caused by my nutrition because I, I've, I've eaten well all my life. Right. I think it was caused, and that's what I want to talk to you about. I think it was caused by my stress that was suppressing my immune system. I was not very good at managing my stress. Could be. A and so stress. I think my immune system ended up, you know, not able to kill off the cancer cells. So I really had to work on that. And I had to feed my body with tons of good nutrition to help build, build back up my immune system. But you said something to me on the phone last week that just I've been thinking about for the entire week. And I really want you to talk with me about this. And I think it'd be interesting for our, our, our listeners too. You said that now that I am cancer free and I did it this way, you said that my body would be more resilient and more powerful, I think you said, or strong. Yes. That I, that 
more than ever before. And I would, I want to, you'd explain how, how, because I think a lot of times people fear that their cancer is going to come back. Right. I don't really have that fear, but I think what you said was something that really piqued my interest on how, from a physiological standpoint, what you were, what you were referring to. So could you there's strong, that? there's a strong evidence that your body become adept and your body improve. You didn't do it via drugs. You did it yourself. So the memory of the process of respond to the cancer is a stressor. It put your body under enormous stress, but you responded to it and overcame it within a relatively short period, actually. You overcame it. Your body has a memory of that. So what destroys your cancer is exactly the system that I just talked, the immune system activated by the adaptive stress response that have the ability. I mean, if you know probably the mechanism and um, how blood cells, white blood cells have the ability once they detect to destroy cancer cells, there are other things. Good nutrients, especially many polyphenols, are toxic to cancer. They're really toxic to it. Right. And I brought even in my, in my soft some even more powerful. So you probably did all the right measures. Your body has an ability to memory. It's almost like a muscle memory. I mean, ah, yeah. if you break your bone, usually break the bone. If it's done right, the reformed bone can be stronger, even thicker than the previous one. So yes, I believe a battle-hardened body becoming stronger. It has a memory of something that it already overcame. It is now much, it's almost like vaccination. Think about vaccination. You put something on a body that is not trained to resist the virus. Suddenly it become trained because it detect now through the vaccination, the stuff, etc. know how to do. Not that I'm so much for vaccination, but the principle is classical homeosis. That means you apply a level of stress, you become gradually resistant more and more to this stress and even more intense stress. So the benefit on you right now, yeah, it was hard on the body, but the benefit, your body reached a state that is fine beyond the state that you were before. It was hard on my body, but really, what, what's harder? Like drinking green smoothies, healing your body, or injecting it with poison and chemo? Really pick your heart, you know, right? I, I agree, but people are in general, they are scared. Not, or not everybody. Look, you cannot blame anyone. The fear. Right. When they hear from this doctor, somebody sit roly-poly with an eyeglasses, talking from the patching <laughs> and say, you know, hesitating. We find this and this, and here what I suggest that we should do. People de- feel that they are diminished. They want to hear advice, and unfortunately, they always hear advice from a doctor who has some deals, and that's all he knows. That's all he knows, yeah. Yeah. I, and- I, uh, I audio taped all of my conversations with my oncologist, and I wrote about it in my book. Um, it's, it's a shame because they don't know. They don't know. They can't learn about the stuff that we're talking about today they can't research it they can't research intermittent fasting they can't research anything holistic because they'll lose their medical license the system does not want to recognize it terry one of the strongest stuff it's called berberine uh we source it from the cork tree actually the cork tree almond tree it's coming from a bark of tree bark actually have some of the greatest nutrient ever bark yeah bark of tree uh, stuff exists in area that we consider today nutritional ways. Bark, peas, peels, zones, and, and stuff that we don't eat today. Early human did eat it. And traditional herbal medicine, usually many of the good stuff, uh, very bitter coming from bark of trees. Um, Berberine have shown have probably more research beside resveratrol on its effect on extending life and inhibiting the mTOR mechanism, the dry the aging process, has more research than any other a nutrient yet. And it has shown to be more potent in reversing type 2 diabetes than even the drug metformin. But people will still take metformin rather than berberine 
Why? And berberine is not, very easy to get. It, no, it's easy. Yeah. Yes, no, it's easy. Mm -hmm. uh, when I started this stuff, it wasn't that simple. Now it's easy. But still, ignorance to what the ignorance to what the impact of stuff that can substitute drug even one or one or better um we are facing a very dire situation and i cannot blame the people who are sick but the one thing that you're right people should at least learn the options yeah you, you cannot tell them what to do but at least learn the options yeah they've got to take their health in their own hands they just got to do it absolutely absolutely yeah. and the benefit again i go find beyond just curing a disease it just make you live better and enjoy incredible benefit all over your organ mentally and physically it rejuvenates your skin your organ your liver your ability to sustain energy utilize energy all this stuff are incredible i have a chapter on sex and how Resiliency to stress, delay sexual aging. Um, I cannot come to the whole story now, but it's a very <laughs> interesting phenomena how nature favors those who resist to stress simply because natural selection prefers the fittest over the unfittest. So think about from perspective of nature, it rather have species here with better genes, better resilience, lead to stress that prove themselves to better survive than those who are less able to survive. That's the survival of the fittest rule of nature. So one of the big aspects is sexual performance. So those who are resilient to stress or species resilient to stress, for instance, like wild salmon, who actually reproduce just in the end of its life just when you reach about to die nature compensates the species with an ability to resist the stress hormones that usually inhibit sexuality hmm. wow. it's a very interesting phenomenon so very the reward is wide you earn your life back if you just know what to do yeah. so what's next for you ori what, what, what is, besides coming up with these just adaptive foods and, and eliminating the junk food era, what's, what's next on your agenda? What's your next project? I'm now in, now when we saw the big picture, I really enjoy now going to and zoom into some of the details. And because I see right now sugar is one of the key problem of our life 100 percent agree yes i am zooming on very creative solution beyond sugar substitute and i'm collecting now try to produce products that are very tasty with special nutrient that and these are even sweet products that not only prevent the elevation of sugar blood sugar actually reduce it really oh, yes yeah, so we are, we are trying to extract a new sugar and actually even new salt from sources that we've never done before, a all natural, but they taste good. Ooh, you got me curious. <laughs> uh, soon, soon. So I'm in the process and it is a very interesting area that you constantly explore it's not that I finished the book and goodbye. It's an area that constantly renew itself. You're, all, you're always giving us information that's so useful, Ori. Seriously, you're always creating material and your research and your knowledge is just beyond almost anybody I can even, even think of. You're so brilliant. Thank you, Terry. Maybe it's too, maybe it's too late for me. Uh, I've been dragged around. <laughs> physically, mentally, and this and this, but I do believe that you and I and other people can bring knowledge and in practice, not just in theory, uh, that 
other people, maybe younger than us, can follow and benefit. Yes, I do believe that people can more than double the lifespan. Mm -hmm. I believe that it's not just about living long, it's enjoying your better quality of life during your prolongated life. Mm -hmm. And we must keep exploring good ways to do it. Nothing is bad without trying to restrict and change who we are. Yes, we are creatures that designed for stress, but we also designed to enjoy our life. Right. I think we people don't do everything. that. I yes. think people are so stressed out and they're so they're so not, you know, feeling well and they're nutritionally deficient that they just don't enjoy their quality of life. I think you're right on there. They need we need to recognize who we are. So we do have a sweet taste and you do have a sweet for salty and bitter and estrogen and everything. We do have sexual desire when we do have a desire to look good and it's and it shouldn't ever be inhibited or suppressed but addressed the way it is. Right. And as people get older, they should never tell themselves, oh you know what? So that is for me you know, I, I don't need this anymore. I don't need this anymore because I am getting old. No, there is a little girl in you and every woman and a little boy in every male. It doesn't matter how old you are. And you always need to nourish and cherish this little girl or little boy because you deserve it. You just need the knowledge. Yeah. You need to know what to do. Do not give up. It doesn't matter how much money you make. Do not give up on your chance to swipe. Awesome. Top three things, top three tips you can give anybody watching today on how to either lose weight, feel better, anti-aging. Give me your top three things that you would advise everybody that they need to start doing today. Are you talking about weight loss or life? Yes, I think it will all come in one package. I would say is like this. If you don't talk to Terry, get the warrior diet or get my book because it will really show you how good protocol of intermittent fasting can achieve you all the benefit. Combine intermittent fasting with the short, intense exercise routine. Eat to your heart with the right food combination and I'll show you what to do. And you cannot get wrong. If you're overweight, your body will start to redesign itself. And yes, go to saf.org, saf.org, or defensenutrition.com. Look for SAF. Give yourself a chance to enjoy this nutrient that we just talked about. And please send us your testimonial. I'm very, very curious. I think I know what I'm going to get if you do it right. But I'm very curious to see what is your experience with this protocol and with this change of life. So defensenutrition.com or SAF, S as in Sam, A as in Apple, F as in Frank. Yeah, stress activated food, yes. SAF.org or defensenutrition.com. Look for stuff. I will be putting that okay. in the show notes and at the course, bottom. And I'm so excited for people to try it because I, I think that you are onto something or you have been for years and I just admire you and I respect you. And thank you so much for taking your time to talk with us today. I think it was absolutely amazing. And everybody needs to go and get Ori's old books, but also his new book. We, one thing we didn't uh -huh. talk about, which I wanted to talk about was you learned, you taught me something in this book called Hor, Hor, Hormesis. 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 Yes. I've never heard of that term before. I had to look it up. And I'm like, figures, Ori would teach me something again. Uh, and that was really interesting to me. Can we talk three minutes about that? Sure. Hormesis is a process, at least by science, where exposure to low-level stress um, condition your body to resist high-level stress. It's a, it's a basic phenomenon of nature that apply to many, many systems that are familiar to us, from military training to vaccination to any kind of uh, learning. We learn step by step, even going and doing physical fitness. Um, you start with lower weight, you gradually gain strength, you go to higher weight. But when you think deeply, this process can do amazing stuff for you and change the way you look at life. For instance, 
We were trained to avoid toxin by all means. Heavy metal, for instance, avoid it. The truth is... We can't. We can't and we shouldn't because yeah. exposure to low level of toxin make us resilient more than non-exposure at all. And even MSG, there is naturally occurring MSG on some of the greatest food that we eat uh, or, or fermented food, uh, sauerkraut, uh, yogurt. This naturally occurring MSG trigger your body to adapt and improve. It is the massive exposure to intense stress or to chronic stress that destroy you. Chronic stress cause you to get sick. Most people today are under chronic stress without even knowing that. Um, it's very important to know how to ever deal with chronic stress. There are methods that you can break the chronic stress. So the same stress, if chronic can kill you, if intermittent can heal you, you need to just know how to make it right. And in my book, again, it's available in Amazon. I show you how to take advantage of this process of homesis. What trigger make you live long and enjoy quality of life? And what trigger make you old? And the last thing that I want to say, Terry, I strongly believe that we do not need to die old. Right. Yes, we are trained that we, you know, we eat, and then you need to live long, and then you age and you die right. old. We don't need to die from dementia, Parkinson, Alzheimer's, sarcophenia, or cancer. We don't. I agree. There is evidence that if, when you're becoming resilient to, you become resilient to aging, you can live long to an old age and still die like young people do, not from age-related causes. That's amazingly said. Thank I you. Agree. Thank, Thank you. you, Ori. Again, everybody, I'll put the name of his book and all the information in the, in the details of these notes. And I just want to thank you again. I hope we, we can do this again real soon. Sure. Pleasure here. Pleasure here. Pleasure to thank talk to you. Thank you so much, Ori. Appreciate it. Talk to you later. Thank you. Okay, bye.